Welcome back to News Radio 590 KLBJ AM 590 and on your FM dial at 99.7 everywhere intergalactically in our stream at newsradioklbj.com. Let's give them the business. A number of workers at Round Rock based Dell Technologies is getting a little bit smaller. They got a company laying off thousands of employees as it restructures its operations with a focus on artificial intelligence. It was just last year that Dell slashed 13,000 positions following a big drop in sales. No specific number in this recent round of layoffs at this time. It is 550. How many ads can you ignore on a website? Well, soon most, if not all of them. Yeah, that is if you use an iPhone. A number of beta testers are getting a look at a new feature of Apple's upcoming iOS 18 called Distraction Control. And it allows people using the Safari mobile web browser to tap an intrusive, obstructing advertisement on a website and make it go away. Fucking betas. Effect. The website Mac Rumors has a demo video of the feature. It supposedly works on ads, those except all cookie prompts, and even videos that automatically start playing but prevent you from scrolling to the thing for which you are looking. Evan Brown, Fox News. Boeing leaders, they're testifying in front of the National Transportation Safety Board. It's day two of a marathon hearing for Boeing. On Tuesday, Boeing's senior vice president of quality, Elizabeth Lund, told the NTSB Boeing has made a number of changes since a 737 MAX had a blowout mid-flight. We are auditing against these improvements with our internal audit team as we make them. The chair of the NTSB told Boeing during the hearing that it would not be a PR campaign for the company. Whistleblowers have alleged Boeing was negligent when safety concerns were brought to the company about the condition of certain planes. At the White House, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. Elon Musk and social media platform X have filed a major lawsuit in Texas. The company previously called Twitter is suing a group of companies that had been advertisers. But they stopped advertising in 2022 because of concerns about harmful content on the site. Those companies were organized in a group called the Global Alliance for Responsible Media. The lawsuit claims the massive advertiser boycott deprived the business of billions of dollars in revenue and violated antitrust laws. The suit was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas. That's newsman Steve Randall reporting. And with a look at your money, here's reporter Jessica Edinger. Wall Street opens this morning after stocks rebounded from Monday's plunge, clawing back some of those losses. The Dow was up 300 points. The S&P and the Nasdaq gained 1% each. This sort of concentrated panic was done. We're back to the end of the first quarter levels in the S&P. A lot of stuff really did wipe away months worth of upside. So that's just the way it goes. CNBC's Mike Santoli. And some investors say the economy is doing just fine. What is the economy? What is it doing? It's growing about two, two and a half percent. Atlanta Fed is at two nine, whatever that is, it's not recessionary. And I look at the consumer, we all look at the consumer because it's really super important. And there's some tailwinds for the consumer because it's important. Gasoline prices are down 10% in the past year. Mortgage rates are the lowest since April of 2023. Inflation is at two and a half percent. Hightower's Stephanie Link on CNBC. Credit card debt hit a record in the second quarter. Research from the New York Fed finds that credit card balances rose by more than 5% from the same period a year ago. Credit cards come with interest rates now on average of more than 20%. Disney is raising streaming prices for Disney+, Plus, Hulu, ESPN+, and bundles. The increases start in October. Most plans will cost a dollar or two more per month. Disney also plans to crack down on password sharing. That starts next month. Uber shares were higher on stronger-than-expected quarterly results. Airbnb shares plunged last night after the closing bell on an earnings miss, and the company is warning of slowing U.S. demand. Jessica, you've got the list of most expensive cities to buy a home. Yeah, this list is based on how much someone has to earn to be able to buy a median-priced home in that city. Mortgage Analytics, uh, the firm HSH, compiling a list of the most expensive U.S. cities to afford a home and the salary you need to buy in that market. Number one most expensive city is San Jose, California. Mm. Necessary income of more than $463,000 to buy a median-priced home. The median-priced home there, $1.84 
Average income needed across the 50 most expensive cities is 104,000, well above the U.S. median household income of $74,000 or thereabouts. CNBC's Tyler Matheson. On today's watch list, we get earnings from Disney and CVS Health, Hilton, Lyft, Sony, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Robin Hood. We also get another report on consumer credit today, and it's day two of congressional hearings on the Boeing Max door blowout on that Alaska Airlines jet last January. That is reporter Jessica Edinger. It is 5.55 here at KLBJ. The Todd and Oz Show.